Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Friday's episode of the Roundtable Talk with your host, Sharifa Hardy, as well as your co-host, Belinda Baker. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Who do we have some special guests for you today? <laughs> Be sure to share the show. Be sure to um, support the show because our guests our co-hosts are giving up their time to be with you this morning and to help you through what you're going through. We're mixing today a little bit of nonprofit, a little bit of um, connection with a little bit of good old fashioned rock and roll. So we have a diverse group of guests today. We have the co-founders of Walking, ooh, I messed it up already. The co-founders of Waken Giants, excuse me, the co-founders of Waken Giants. Good morning to Sarah Bonds and Martha Pinkoffs. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Great. Thanks for asking. Oh, yes. And then when we talk about music, that good old fashioned rock and roll, we have a guest who is on the top of the charts. He's been on top of the charts. His songs always hit at least the top 10, top five. Good morning to Mr. Bill Abernathy. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Man, I am just living the dream here in Kansas City, just having a great time. Thank you for asking. You are so welcome. I love your wall. Oh, thank you. Those are my boys. Uh, I have a few. So you can't see them all, I guess, in the, in the video. But uh, yeah, uh, I've been doing this for a while, you know, so you, you collect things over time, right? So Yes. Belinda, how are you this morning? You know what? I'm doing fine. Just fantastic out here in California. <laughs> Today is a good day so far, and it's still just now 8, what, 805, okay? Yes. But you know, yes. some mornings can be really bad for me, Sharifa, but so, but tomorrow is a good morning. Yes, but this, we did it this week. We made it through. I don't know, I, like, I think our verbiage has changed during this virus. Everything is like, we made it through. We we made it past that point, almost as if we're in a, a um, end of times, which I don't want to say, but we did it. We finished the first week. Yes. Yes, exactly. So our guest, Waking Giants, I said it correctly this time, Waking <laughs> Giants. I was interested in having you on the show because I know that what you do is a lot of social impact. You're a social impact company. And in this time of need, we need people who are going out, helping us, um, giving us tools and providing information um, can you tell us a little bit about Waking Giants, why you started it, and do you see the same use of it now as you did when you initially launched? So I can take a little bit of the origin story question. And we started it, um, we started it out of a couple of different places. I come from food and politics is my background, and Sarah is a doula and a midwife and has run an international aid organization for the last 15 years that she founded. Um, so we, we come to the work um, with the acknowledgement that the systems that are in place were built to generate the results that they generate. Whether those results serve us and, and are what we want to see is up for us to do something about. I don't like the system. I don't, I don't like the results that the systems deliver. So I believe deeply that we need to reform them. And in order to reform them, we have to understand them and we have to understand why they were built and why they, what results they were intended to generate so we can make changes uh, accordingly. So that's kind of where we came from. And I would say that this, what this pandemic has done has put a big spotlight on how fundamentally we don't take care of people and how these systems don't have, we have, we have not got a social safety net. And so the most vulnerable people among us are hit the hardest in this pandemic. They're also left with the burden of stocking our grocery stores, of taking care of the food, of, of cleaning up the hospitals, of doing all of these things. So they're at the same time expected to deliver us, but not taken care of. So I think that it has, it has really laid bare that. I can definitely see that. Now, when you when you describe that today, looking at the world, what's going on in the world, it's like, you know what? Yes, that makes sense. But when did you find found Waking Giants? 
We founded Waking Giants in the middle of last year. So I had spent uh, an election cycle um, running a campaign in Texas, um, which was great. It was really informative. I learned a lot. I also learned that politics is not is not ultimately for me um, as the method of change, because I think that it is, um, you know, we've got to do some some other work before before it reaches that place. And I'm gonna let Sarah talk because she and I like joined forces in at the end of last year and it really took off, it changed. Yes, it seems, the reason I asked, I'm definitely gonna let Sarah respond, but the reason I asked is because it almost seems as if it was um, awareness of what's to come. You know, you started at the end of last year and then all of a sudden the world goes to wherever it's going in a handbasket. And so you were right on time. Sarah, what, what are your thoughts on Waking Giants and the need for it? Well, so Martha and I, were we were separately doing this on our own, and we had a matchmaker who put us together, who saw us both sort of building on our own and was like, hey, y'all should build together. You'll go further, faster. And she was right. Um, so when I, w I ran this humanitarian aid organization for the last 15 years, and I have a background in public health and reproductive health and have worked through the, boot, the bird flu epidemic in Asia and Ebola um, about five years ago. Um, and so from like a public health perspective, we saw this coming in a sense, like it was time for a large pandemic. It's very cyclical. Um, those of us who work in global health have been waiting for this. Um, from an organizational and business perspective, I think that Martha and I do feel uniquely positioned in Waking Giants to be able to to provide the tools to folks where we're at. Um, you know, as a mail order and retail focused company, um, we are well positioned to get the stuff to the people right now. Like we didn't have a brick and mortar store that we needed to worry about staffing and keeping the lights on. We, this was meant to meet people where they're at. And we will continue to do that wherever the people are. And so right now, clearly we are, we are gathering virtually and that is where we are at. And so we have made not a tremendous pivot, but a small pivot because we were already starting to do some of this to developing online content and digital downloads and things that people can just access in their home as they look for opportunities to put structure to their day because that causes us a lot of anxiety right now. A lot of us just lost our external structure and like having schools that organize our children and a workplace that we go to that organizes us. So from that level, to big structural change, right? So like this afternoon, I'm hosting an anti-racism workshop um, specifically for our Asian allies and communities in America and how we can show up for them during this time of xenophobia. And it's all available on the internet, you know? And so Martha and I are just really committed to making this as easy for people as possible. We know the work itself is hard um, and requires a lot of deep reflection that can be uncomfortable. And so we want to make the tools as accessible to folks as possible. Yes, I can definitely understand. Now you mentioned the tools, the tools for people to be able to do good. So their lives has changed, their outer world has changed. Now, one of the things that I've been speaking with all week with my guests is how has this affected you personally? Um, well, it's affected me personally and my family. My husband is a special needs pediatrician mm -hmm. and takes care of the 500 sickest kids in the city. And so he is under a lot of stress right now to keep those kids safe. Um, I was invited to join several COVID task forces around maternal health around the country about a month ago when this whole thing started. So I've been involved in a public health sense. Um, my kids are home, right? That's crazy and feels like anarchy every day. So impacted my life that way. Um, and my sister and my brother-in-law actually had COVID a couple of weeks ago um, and yeah. they're doing much better, but that was very scary for us um, because they live far away and they, we weren't there to be able to take care of them. They have a great community. They live in Boston, but um, that was super scary. But so I think those are probably the major ways it's impacting me and my family. Um, but there's a lot of light in it too. You know, my husband is not traditionally was not home a lot. He has a pretty rigorous schedule and he's home now, which is tremendous. Like he just 
has a banjo in his office and between patients, I hear him just like learning to play the banjo and he gets to come out and have lunch with the kids and we take the dog for walks. And, you know, there are parts of this that are really very tender and feel very special for us. Um, so we're trying real hard to focus on that. Now you mentioned your doctor, your husband was a doctor who treated the 500 to 600 sickest kids. So during this time, and this is just me um, kind of assuming, I would have assumed that he would be even busier, you know, that he would be on call um, treating, you know, because doctors and nurses are in great demand right now. Yeah. So what he's missing is his commute. <laughs> okay. So that means he's home more um he's he's certainly unavailable still a lot like when he he's seeing kids via telemedicine um his phone's ringing all of the time but he is he is here um and we also know that this is not going to last forever um the the surge as it is and the curve of the of the virus as it moves around the world hasn't hit us the way that it it is going to in a couple of weeks. And so we also really understand um, that it's about to get a lot harder for him. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're taking advantage of this time that we have together before he has to go live in quarantine and gets called into staff and ICU. Um, and that will, that will be a very hard and scary time for us, for sure. Our, our medical professional community that we are a part of, um, are really struggling, are really struggling. Um, the folks who staff hospitals in New York and other parts of the country where the, the cases are high, um, and we're in very ready contact with them and two, two physicians here in Austin that we know um, were sick last week, so we help take care of their kids and go grocery shopping. It's coming, you know, and we really feel that. Like the metaphor I keep referring to is like a hurricane. Like I feel like we're in the eye of the storm right now and it's sort of calm. Um, but that is not going to last much longer. So to speak to that, he is busy, but he's here and we know he's about to be a lot busier. Martha, how has it affected you personally? So before everything went haywire, it was our kids spring break and we were taking my wife's mom to the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. First we were going to fly and then we were going to drive and then we stayed home. Mm -hmm. So she's actually still with us and she's been here um, now going on three weeks. So we mm -hmm. have actually had this really lovely experience of, of multiple generation living. Mm -hmm. So grandma's here, my kids are not in school and you know, they do their <laughs> reading to grandma and my wife and I can go on a walk or mm -hmm. um, do that. My, my wife's job is secure. She works in tech and she works from home. So, her life has changed because now we're all just on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then from the perspective of waking giants and trying to run a business um, in this and pivot it, it's just, you know, finding time to actually think has been, I have not found that to like assimilate my thoughts mm -hmm. and I haven't gotten to hug my parents in a few weeks. <laughs> That's making me feel very sad. Mm -hmm. um, and just thinking, I think I feel, I feel a lot the, like, what must it be like for the folks in the hospitals that are, that are there by themselves and that can't be with their family and, and what I, I just, I, I'm really kind of almost perseverating on that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, we have been having also really beautiful moments. This is my wife and I both work. So my kids have been in daycare or school for you know, six and eight years. And so this is the longest we've actually just been down together. Mm -hmm. My son's learned to ride his bike. We walk every day, we go on bike rides. And so we, we have these really sweet spots in the midst of watching all of this unfold and trying to be really protective of my 80 year old mother-in-law to make sure that we don't bring anything in that would make her sick. Mm -hmm. I can definitely imagine. We talked about that on an earlier episode of the round table about people getting a little stir crazy, people all being in the house uh, on top of each other. I think Belinda was speaking about that earlier this week. She's in the house with her husband. He's over there. She's over there. Belinda. Yes. It's, it's kind of hard because then when the grandkids come, because, you know, I tell my daughters, bring them here when you go do what you got to do, because then I know they're safe. Yeah. But when we're all here and then I put a big old jumper in my living room 
so they could be occupied because kids don't understand. A two-year-old and a five-year-old, they don't understand why they can't go outside. They don't understand why people are wearing masks. They don't understand why I can't go to the store with mommy. They don't understand. And the jumper we bought, and we was going to put it outside, but then it's like, no. So I moved everything in my house around, and I have a real big outside jumper in the living room that I blows up when they come. So everybody can be content that day. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. That's really special. Yes, it is. So in all of this, we, we lean on the arts. We lean on the music field. Can you tell us a little bit about how the COVID-19 has affected you in your everyday life? Exact opposite of what everyone else has been saying. Just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so I live by myself. I do have uh, my kids and my grandkids that are here in the city, fortunately, uh, in the Kansas City area. And so uh, I'm very used to them coming by and seeing me or me going to see them. In the current environment, that's not possible. So what, uh, uh, you know, the little sessions that I have with my three-year-old granddaughter where she comes over and she says, Papa, I want to sing in the microphone and she's going to bust out a frozen song or something, you know, into the microphone. Uh, yeah, we're not getting to do that in person uh, right now. So uh, we have figured out uh, ways to connect, obviously, through some of the technology, you know, some of the technology that we're using today. Uh, but I, I kind of miss that. Now, all that said, a lot of people think that I've been training for this uh, solitude my whole life. Uh, I have a Same friend here. Mine, uh, I have a friend of mine who actually bought me a shirt one time, one of my musician friends that said, uh, that the shirt just says people, not a fan. So um, not that I don't like people, but some of the things that people do are really, you know, a little frustrating to me. So uh, the solitude I enjoy, uh, I enjoy the time alone to just think. Uh, and write and do the things that I do. Uh, but a little bit of that uh, going to see the kids, having the kids come over for dinner, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, yeah, it's disruptive in, in my life. And I kind of miss that. So uh, fortunately, uh, in today's world, we have technology. And so that's as good as we can do right now. So we just need to leverage that as much as we can. So yeah, that's affected me a little bit. So yeah. Yeah. actually a, a cute story by grandsons. Um, I have twin grandsons who are, uh, they're almost 15. They'll be 15 in June. We're concerned about me. They come and check on me, right? Mm -hmm. And they call me, you know, and they were concerned about me being here all by myself, right? And so they thought that I would get lonely. So the other day they drove past and dropped off their puppy for, yeah. for the killer eight pound poodle. Uh, who has spent some time with me now uh, in the last few days. So uh, I thought that that was pretty touching, that they didn't want me to be alone, so they dropped off their pup. They couldn't come, so they dropped off the pup. So that was what he and I have had a few good days together. That was sweet. That was sweet. I was watching a video on social media about a grandfather who lives across the street from his granddaughter. And so they were having a dance off across the street. So she would do some moves and then he would do some moves, but they couldn't cross the street and hug and be together. But they had the dance off. And I thought I just thought it was just the cutest thing imaginable. Yeah, no, I think it's great. The, the kids are, are and they embrace it. And of course, they're younger, right? So they're all into the technology and all the stuff. So they've embraced it. Uh, as a matter of fact, just this morning, my son, uh, who also lives in town, uh, uh, the, the grandkids are my daughter's kids. And uh, my son is kind of their, their hero, surrogate father, whatever. Uh, and so they spend a lot of time together. And uh, he came by this morning and stole my Xbox uh, <laughs> so that uh, so that he and the, and the boys can play against each other on Xbox uh, during this time. So, yeah, you know, I think we all make adjustments. Right? So. Linda, you were going to say something? Yeah, you know, it, it's different how all of a sudden people have become so creative mm -hmm. on doing things that they never would have done before if this hadn't have happened. You know, like you were saying, they're across the street from each other, social distancing, but they're coming up with ideas to keep each other happy. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, one of the things I've been seeing on social media, on Facebook as well, the things people are posting on how they're going to like, you know, group homes 
and keeping the elderly from being so alone, playing music for them. I mean, the creativity that's come out of this, it's just like so amazing. It's just real amazing. Yes, we discussed that earlier in the show. I, I saw that in yourself. You know, you went, your post, the, your communication really changed. You went from sharing, um, I would say, content and information, which was more, um, I think, factual as as opposed to now. It, it's like your trivia and funny things and getting people yeah. to think, you know, you're, you're creating opportunities for people to start conversations. And I think that's, I think that's just amazing. Yeah, because you know what, every, this has been a challenge for, you know, I know definitely for me, because it brought me outside of my box. Usually I stay at home anyway, but when you're told to stay at home, you don't want to do it. Yeah. But when you stay at home automatically, it's like normal. But when someone tells you, you have to stay home, that's when I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But you one of those people stay at home anyway. But I don't understand why it affects you differently when someone tells you, you have to. Uh -huh. For me, I say that for me, sir. You, you know, you're saying that you stay at home and you're like, how does that affect you now that when you didn't have to do it, you were doing it, but now that you're told to do it, it's like, does it make a difference? The question is for you, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Oh. No, not not for me. Yeah, uh, I like staying at home, and uh, you know, a lot of times I I actually work from home in my real job outside of my music stuff, and so. Uh, I do miss the social interaction and going and seeing my friends and, and, you know, getting out and going and seeing some of my music friends play and, and do all the things that we do. Uh, but the solitude itself, I kind of enjoy, you know, I, I kind of look at it like this. I have a, an old saying that I use a lot. It is what it is until it's not. And this is kind of where we are. Uh, we mm -hmm. really don't have a choice. Right. Uh, and we got to, figure out how to make the best of it, you know, and how to really embrace it. You know, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I've actually accomplished a few things over the past three weeks that I've kind of been locked up that were on my list. You know, everybody has the list, right? The list of things that one of these days I'm going to do, and it may right. be clean out a closet. It may be, you know, update your will, you know, th those kind of things. Uh, I've found that I'm checking those little things off that, off that list pretty regularly now that I actually am forced to take the time to do that. So uh, not saying that <laughs> how long that list is gonna be and how, how many things that uh, I'm gonna actually find that I need to do over the course of the next, you know, four, six, eight weeks, whatever this is, ends up being. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, again, it is what it is, right? Until it's not. And so we just have to understand that and, and really embrace it and, and do use this time as most effectively as we can. And it may be, you know, having fun on social media and posting, you know, I've got a whole folder now of what I call funny COVID memes, you know, things that people have posted that I think. Send me some. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, the, the creativity that people are using during this time, uh, as mentioned earlier, I, th I think is outstanding, you know, and, uh, you know, we have this opportunity, right? Let's take advantage of it. So it's different for sure. It's way if there was ever going to be a definite definition of social disruptive change, folks, we are living it because yes. we're having to do things way different than we've had to do in the past. Uh, but, you know, change is a good thing. So, uh, uh, you know, embrace it. Enjoy it. You know, try to figure out the best way to utilize the time that you have. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And I would encourage everybody else to try to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, like getting, change. <laughs> getting to be home is a real privilege to have a home to be in, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, we're I just, um, if, you know, in the moments that I am claustrophobic and upset or distressed about the state of my kitchen or the bathroom floor, I just try to remind myself that I'm really lucky to have a kitchen and a bathroom floor and really lucky to, to have a kid to make a mess mm -hmm. and to, to really try to keep myself in the opportunity framework and not the threat framework around this um, is like sometimes some days like an hourly meditation some days it is easier than others but i agree bill that there is a lot of opportunity here if we choose to we choose to see it that way you mentioned sarah you mentioned specifically um the floor and different things like that so I, my, my children are 23 and 26. They're, they're older now. 
but I was always one of those parents, you know, after summer break, if school started at eight o'clock, I'm like, my kids would be there at seven ten. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm ready for these kids to go back to school, you know? So I can't even imagine being at home, being quarantined, and then you have small children. I think the kitchen floor would have been the least of my worries. I'd probably be calling Belinda, Belinda, help me come get these kids because I, I don't know what to do. I'd send you a babysitter. Because <laughs> the Mm -mm, mm -mm, it's hard because you know my grandkids don't live with me it's just me and my husband so mm -hmm. usually it's quiet mm -hmm. but when they hear I mean two and five they fight like cats and dogs mm -hmm. and it's hard to keep them separated mm -hmm. you know because if one is in the other room the other one just have to go see what they're doing but <laughs> no I, 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 I hire a babysitter for you I thank do that. you thank <laughs> you I, I appreciate it Martha how you doing with the kids you know, I'm having to readjust my expectations like every five minutes because we're trying to do homeschooling type activities and it's just like, if they read to grandma, then maybe that's all they get done for the day and mm -hmm. we're just going to have a really long summer. Mm -hmm. Because so, it's like t the cooking, the cleaning, the business, the like mental space that's required it's just i'm trying not to overachieve which is hard <laughs> i like, like an overachiever <laughs> i like it <laughs> one of the things that that um i wanted to ask you about that was i keep hearing parents talk about these packets that they receive from the school and i know bill mentioned that these memes and i've seen these memes of in it, it's that show parents trying to teach children and see i would be that parent like i don't know F figure it out that there's me as the teacher, I feel sorry for my, how did you deal with, or how do you handle maybe teaching some aspect that you yourself may not be very familiar with? Sharifa, I don't know yet. I mean, like that's the, it's, that's such a trick for me because like I went through all of the assignments that they'd gotten last week, last night, just to see like what we'd done and what we'd missed because it's also like all jumbled up and hard to follow. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they have Spanish lessons, they have like all of these different assignments. They have to, somebody has to do, do a sock puppet and somebody has to do build your some other thing. <laughs> and I just- You sound like okay. me. Yeah. I've already mind, given up. Look at each other and I'm like, well, I'll do this one, you do that one. And the only subject that I'm good at teaching, like mm -hmm. unequivocally is PE. Like I, yes. I, I, know <laughs> how to do, I know how to do recess. Yes, that's it. I can yeah. do lunch. Yeah, in lunch. I'm, I'm a decent lunch lady. <laughs> Mom called me yesterday and was like, so how's homeschooling going? And I was like, what? This is not homeschooling. This is my children being home and maybe they learn something. Like this right. is not. And we, my mom comes from a very religious family from rural North Dakota, like a bunch of Mennonites and a lot of homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like she's got this, this understanding that like, oh, you just sign up and like mm -hmm. join a homeschooling association and they'll just send you the thing. And like the children are just going to like sit down and start doing <laughs> their things. And I'm like, have you met your grandsons? They're not right. doing that. You know, they are right. currently chasing each other in the yard with axes, you know, <laughs> no. <laughs> not not like in a threatening way like they're they're doing the zombie apocalypse they're playing a lot right now um but i can only imagine what that looks like to the neighbors with like these cute feral boys just running around with like weaponry um yeah we had we had actually a very um good family meeting about this last night and we the way we're phrasing it to our kids is pick some things you want to learn like do you want to learn? So they want to learn how to make a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great. You know what? There's probably a lot of people out there who have nothing to do and could be interviewed right now. So like, okay, you're going to, you're going to write it. You're going to do some research. Mm -hmm. um, we're just going to come up with other like, and like block it, you know, like a week long project that maybe has some math and maybe has some reading, but it, it isn't going to be like an hour of math and an hour of reading. So um, you have that option? I don't but know how this works. So do you have, you have the option to do? Yeah, as I mean, my kids are in public school in Austin and then we have gotten nothing. 
Nothing. Oh, wow. I've never heard that. Like everybody to me have said they received a packet, some sort of packet. My aunt, she received for her granddaughter who's in, who's 14, um, three weeks at each packet her week is 60 pages. So my aunt literally had to go, well, she was going to go. And I told her, don't do that because she didn't realize it. But um, 60 pages printed out at Home um, Office Depot or FedEx, that, that's like almost $200. So she contacted the school. I don't know what happened yet. So I thought everyone received a packet. No, and Austin, the public schools have been doing a survey for the last like two weeks around who has computers at home, who has internet at home. And turns out about 50% of the kids who go to public school in Austin do not have internet or devices at home. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a very equitable situation, right, to require one set of kids to do one thing and then not another, you know, if the other kids can't do it. So I think they're really struggling with that, like trying to figure out what is the responsible thing to do. I know there's also a bunch of drives happening around town to get people screens. Um, the school district is offering free internet, like there's a dial-in number, I don't know how that works, but um, that's available. But they're really just trying to figure it out. So in that time, it's just like kind of a free-for-all until it all comes together. Yeah, but I have to admit, I love what you're doing. You know, you're, you're capitalizing on the situation. You're saying, okay, man, learn how to do a podcast. It's not like you just turn it on and all of a sudden start talking. There's work that, that behind that, you know, like, like this, all of all of us know, right? So you've got to figure out what your scope's going to be. You got to figure out all these different things. And there is math involved and there is technology involved. So I love that. That's a great thing that you're doing. That's really cool. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. I agree. And I, and I think at least myself and probably a couple of other guests will sign up as, as podcast guests. So if they need somebody to be on the show, call Sharifa Hardy. I'm volunteering for everything. If you're updating your will, Bill, I'm volunteering for that too. Go ahead and add Sharifa <laughs> Hardy to the will. I want to be a part of everything. Uh, well, are you a, uh, uh, what do they call them? The people that put the little stamp on there. That's what I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for somebody. The notary? The notary. Yeah, the notary. If you're no. a notary, we could pull that one off online. That'd be fun. See, that'd be challenging. <laughs> we'll do some DocuSign kind of kind of notary, but I'm, I'm actually trying to get in the wheel. You know, so when you, when, when, you know, 40, 50, 70 years from now, when you finally, you know, go ahead and take that great walk in the sky, you can leave all your millions to Sharifa Hardy. Well, I don't know what you're smoking, but I want some. So. <laughs> I'm in Cali. Cali. I'm just, a whole nother I'm show. A, no kids are watching. Anyway, I'm, I'm, like, I'm just an old hippie guitar player in Kansas City, Missouri. There ain't no millions involved at this juncture. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get them to you. Don't worry, Bill. We got you. That's why we have you on the show. By the time you finish today, all those millions are gonna come in. I'm just gonna tack on my royalties and my fees for for all of that. But I love how you. One of the things that you mentioned off air that I want to talk about, Bill, is you mentioned that. A lot of people in the music industry are doing music one way, but you came up with your own creative, I love the creativity, creative way of handling music during this time. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it, and I can't take the, the ownership of this. My daughter actually had this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you guys know, there are a lot of musicians and a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I play with that really rely on music as their full-time thing, you know, as, mm -hmm. as their source of revenue. And uh, I'm fortunate that I don't. Uh, and so music to me is kind of an add on, right? Uh, but they rely on the places being open. They rely on the clubs. They rely on the, the shows and the concerts. And, you know, obviously this hit right at the very beginning of tour season. And, uh, you know, so a lot of tours are getting canceled. I saw uh, just this morning that uh, uh, James Taylor's tour, uh, national tour, has now been canceled. And uh, obviously because of COVID, but one of the other reasons he was touring with Jackson Brown, who actually has COVID now. So, uh, you know, the world's changing, you know, and a lot of my friends are really struggling uh, financially with this. And so they're doing a lot of cool things and, and it's just really exploding uh, through the music industry right now. And Michael, as, as we talked about it literally, is really helping 
uh, facilitate a lot of this. But folks are doing a lot of live streams, a lot of concerts uh, just from their home, which I think is way cool. I think, uh, you know, some of the bigger folks, uh, Brooks and Garth Brooks and those folks have done this. And I think that's great. Uh, and I think that the local musicians that we all support can use that as a platform, you know, to go and link up and, you know, hit my PayPal and give me a tip uh, and help them through this time. And so uh, I didn't want to get in their kitchen, if you would, right? That's kind of their way and, and their way of uh, generating revenue this time. So I wanted to come up with something a little bit different. And I'm very, uh, I'm very concerned about local businesses at this mm -hmm. point. And, yeah. uh, you know, they, they're relying on foot traffic. They're relying on walk-ins and particularly in the area that I live in. And, uh, I'm very concerned about that for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, the viability of their businesses are certainly in challenge at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, and then from a purely selfish standpoint, I really like being able to walk a half a block to the coffee shop and get a fresh cup of fresh brewed coffee and smell the, the uh, the aromas of the coffee roasted as I'm walking up. I love that. That's one of the reasons why I live where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So I got to thinking, well, how can I kind of take this thing since we're all locked up and mm -hmm. do something to help those businesses? So we came up with this idea uh, that we would take requests, right? Song requests. So if there's a song that you would like to hear me play, uh, request that through, you know, social media stuff, you know, all the junk that we all have. Uh, and I will actually play that song and record it and make a video of that because I have, I have that technology here at my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in response to that, I would like for you to go out and support one of the local businesses. Go out on their website, buy something, order drive up if you would. Uh, maybe buy a gift card that you could use later that you could gift to someone else. Something like that, right? Uh, uh, and help support these businesses and it's fun for me to be honest with you uh to do that because i'm getting some requests that uh, maybe aren't in my normal set just saying uh and so i'm getting to learn some music and, and explore some different things uh that people want to hear uh it's fun to, to see the interaction you know through uh, uh the social media stuff after i post this stuff to see what people like and what they don't like and and uh, but it's also even better when somebody goes out and tells me and I got one actually yesterday. Uh, I had posted a, a tune that was requested by uh, one of my fans in New Mexico that had come to one of my shows. And, and uh, uh, when I toured, I got lucky. I did my tour in January for this year. So I didn't have to deal with COVID as, as so much as everybody else. And and uh, he requested this song and he said, Bill, I really love this song. Saw you you know, came to your show in, you know, Albuquerque, wherever it was, uh, could you make a recording of that? And for that, I'm going to donate X money to, and I think that his, uh, uh, he, he was, is an animal rights activist, right? And so he was like all about adopt, you know, some dogs and take care of, of uh, dogs at this time. Well, see, that's kind of a, one of those lost, you don't think about that, or at least I don't, you know, but he did see that was real for him. And so he reached out, and uh, gave a donation to that organization uh, there in his hometown to support that local organization. And, you know, I'll bang out a video, you know, it's not that big a deal for me and uh, uh, it's fun. It's actually kind of fun. So uh, I'm very happy uh, that folks are kind of embracing this. You know, we've gotten quite a bit of press about it uh, around the area. And so I'm getting uh, some very interesting requests. And so now I'm thinking about it. Maybe interesting requests you've had lately. Well, uh, maybe you guys can help me. So, you know, I, I don't want to be everybody's banker. You know, I don't want somebody to go shoot a bunch of money into my PayPal account. I want you to go directly to the, uh, to the businesses. But I'm getting some interesting questions. So I'm an acoustic guitar guy. That's what I do, right? And so, you know, if somebody wants to hear, you know, Jackson Brown or Crosby, Stills and Nash or Dan Fogelberg or somebody from that world, you know, John Mayer, for example, right? I'm your boy. I could do that, right? Uh, but I got a very interesting one the other day, and so I'm trying to figure out exactly how to handle this because if you're in a live environment and the band is taking requests, mm -hmm. it is inevitable that you get the same two songs, especially if you're talking about people in, in my generation, right? Mm -hmm. There's always some guy in the back of the room and he's going to hold up his Bud Light or whatever he has, and he's going to yell, what? Play Freebird. 
That's what everybody wants to, that's what everybody wants to hear. Right. Mm -hmm. and then there's another one, you know, you're an acoustic guy and everybody says, Oh, you play stairway to heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, these are requests. Can I play those songs? Sure. I could play those songs, but really at the end of the day, I'm a dude with a guitar sitting in a loft, right? I'm not going to be able to go out and blow up the whole three bird thing, you know, and do all those fancy leads and all that. So I'm trying to think of a way and maybe you guys could help me. So for some of these songs that are really what I consider to be inappropriate, maybe mm -hmm. I should charge for this, right? You want me to play free bird? You got to give up 500 bucks, right? Uh, if you want me to play Stairway to Heaven, you got to put up a thousand dollars, you know? Um, you know, I'm, I'm playing around with that just to have fun with it, really. Uh, but uh, I think what I'll do, it, and I do this live, uh, I do kind of a mashup, if you would, of, of Freebird and Stairway to Heaven, and I call it Stairway to Freebird. So uh, <laughs> maybe I'll throw that one out there and let that go for free. But uh, yeah, uh, it's always interesting. But uh, I'm really excited about this. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think the folks that are engaging with it are having a good time as well. So, uh, and we're supporting some locals. And, and like I said, they're, they're really close to my heart because I really, I really do uh, love the environment that I live in, farm to table restaurants, fresh everything. Love it. Absolutely love it. And so I want to do what I can uh, during this time to help support that environment and uh, try to keep these businesses as viable as possible. So there's my commercial. How's that? <laughs> That's what we're here for. Good job. That's what we're here for, for commercials. Um, when it, I had an idea. It had nothing to do with the um, not singing those two songs. But what I have really been enjoying is watching the connection, watching the community, watching the camaraderie. And I'm pretty sure at least somebody saw the video. I think it was Italy where they sang from. Was it Italy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was Were they saying beautiful. from the different balconies? Yeah. It was Did you see it, Sarah? Cool. Yeah, they've, they've been coming out in New York and clapping at the same mm -hmm. time every night um, for the healthcare providers. Um, they, yeah, it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful stuff. Yes, I would love to see something like that. We all see challenges where uh, people take a song and then they break up the lyrics from the song and then, uh, you know, they combine the videos so they can show what everyone is doing. I think, those, you know, maybe that's something fun that the local businesses could do. Somebody, the local business owner uh, at this restaurant can sing the first few lines and then they just keep it moving so that you can highlight and focus on, you know, show, showing off all of the local businesses. That's fine. Oh, that's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. Excuse that's why I get royalties. I note. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to write, write that one down for sure. Yeah. I saw, um, I saw the Howard women's soccer team. Mm -hmm. do a I saw that. It's so cute. Yes. So yes. Cool. Yeah. Yes. So they're like, they're dribbling the ball and then they pass it out mm -hmm. of the screen and then it arrives to the next player, but it's mm -hmm. all just, it was so cute. It was fun. Yes. That's part of, I forgot the name. I'm not ready challenge. I believe it is, but I saw that one. And then there's another one with the military that, oh, I was thought was so adorable. And I it's, oh, well, you have to see it. I'm going to have to get it to you. I may have to email it, but it's women in the military, I believe it's in the army, and they're in their full uniform. And then they take the cap, take the hat, and bring it in front of the camera. And when they bring it back up, they're in um, civilian clothes. And so they are so sexy that, that you would never have thought that these were military women. And it's, it's literally about 12 of them. And they keep doing that. And you're like, wow, if I would have saw her on the street, I would have been like, okay, she just you know, chilling and, do, you know, not doing anything serious. She's not taking, but these are um, captains. These are like, they are high profile women in the military, but it was something fun that they decided to do. They keep dropping the hat. So they'll drop it and then the other one catches it. And it was just so cute how they're using connectivity from yes. one video to the, uh, to the next video. So that's why I just love the community aspect. I do too. I think it's so fun. It is. It mm. is. I want to go back to Wake In Giants um, real quick and all you're doing for social impact. You mentioned, I believe it was Sarah earlier, about some of the tools that you have tools available for people to help um, transition or just, 
um, being this time, can you give us a little bit more detail on how your tools can help people? Sure. So one, the first thing we did actually was like the first Friday, I think that we all found ourselves um, in Austin home with our kids was that we designed something called the sanity journal. And it is a daily journal. It's available for download on our website um, that just helps you sort of map your day, but bookended with an intention and a gratitude, which I feel is a really powerful framework to offer us every day. And then in between you get to put, you know, your meetings and your schedule, but also your reflections and your notes. Um, some other tools that are seasonally relevant. Um, I'm Jewish and next week is Passover and we will not be gathering for our Passover seders like we usually do, um, which is a real bummer. That's like one of the favorite, our favorite things that we do every year. My husband and I in our community is to host a big seder and his whole family was coming from all over the country. We have a new baby, not us, but we have a new baby in the family to celebrate. And that's not happening anymore. So what we're offering at Waking Giants is a virtual Seder. And we have made some tools for folks. Um, so we there's this reader, um, like a prayer book that goes with a Passover Seder called the Haggadah. And it has traditional prayers, but Passover is a holiday about justice. It's about freedom. It's about considering... Um, our time in slavery in Egypt and um, how we were released and the struggles that were involved in that. So there's a lot of like existential sort of reckoning that you do during the course of this dinner. And we've always tried to make it modern in our family. And so Waking Giants, we wrote a Haggadah with a, our local rabbi, um, my family's rabbi who lives here in Austin. Um, and it's about the pandemic. It's about, um, freedom while in isolation. It's about anxiety as bondage. And so this is also something that's available for download. And we hope that people are able to really, like this is such a profound opportunity for transformation and reflection um, for us to do together in a community in this new and exciting way, right? An opportunity that we saw. Um, so we've got a whole, a whole list of things that we've built out for that. Um, there's a lot of singing that happens at a Passover Seder. Um, and many of us rely on our musically inclined family members to carry the tune, um, who will not be in the room with us this year. And so we have a playlist that we are, what we've made available that has the traditional songs, but also just some other thematic, um, pop songs as well to keep us sort of focused on the Passover themes. Um, and we've collaborated with a local company another women run company in Austin called Fort Lonesome that is an embroidery company. They just do incredible, incredible work. Mm -hmm. And we've collaborated on something that's called a matzah cover. Mm -hmm. So on the Passover Seder table, we have matzah instead of bread um, because when the, as the story goes, when we were leaving Egypt, we were not able to, we weren't able to bake bread that rises because that takes a long time and we didn't have what we needed. And so we had this like flat cracker like bread. Mm -hmm. And so that is why during Passover we eat matzah. And so you really, this is a very special thing that is on our Seder table. You only use it twice a year. And it's, um, it's like a little blanket for the, for the matzah on the table. And so We've collaborated with Fort Lonesome and it has this beautiful embroidered butterfly on it to symbolize the phase of a cocoon, which we are all sort of in right now in our isolation and the majesty and the beauty that follows. There it is. Thank you, Martha. Um, and Martha to speak so we can get it. Let's yeah. It. And so we're actually able to monogram them with family names or whatever you'd like on them to really mark how this year is different for us from other years. So that's one set of the tools that we're, that we're really, really proud of right now um, in trying to provide the tools that our community needs during this, this, new, this new time. Beautiful. And I will say, I am not Jewish, but I have been to, to, pa to Passover Seders with friends um, in the past, and I really am moved by them. And this Haggadah is so beautiful and it is so relevant to right now that it really appeals, you know, beyond the faith, I think, um, because it's just, 
when I think, you know, I think one of these things that this time is doing is inviting us to center on faith or reconnect to faith because we do have to surrender to what is this drawing from us? And yes, it is beautiful, but yes, there is reorder to it. And like, what do we want to keep and what do we want to leave behind and what do we want to bring forward? And, and so I think, you know, all of those huge questions we're being invited to ask and we're being forced the time and space to, to deal with them. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really crazy time. Yes. We're all here, but again, I mean, sometimes I guess it, for me, it becomes repetitive, but it's the creativity, the creativity, the creativity. Um, like Sarah was saying, I had the same sort of experience, not on that grand level, because I won't compare my birthday to uh, a national religious holiday, but my birthday was Tuesday, the 31st of March. And you, for some reason, my house has always been the house where everybody just congregates. Everybody just shows up, especially on holidays and birthdays. And this was the um, emptiest, let me just say, birthday I've ever had in my life. And, but people, when I reached out to them, of course, they quarantined, they couldn't come over, I couldn't come over. So it's like, wow, to see how you experience life and to um, go back to what Martha was saying about faith, the faith is just understanding that we are not in control, you know what I mean, that we just have to kind of roll with it. But people are coming up on the Easter holiday, coming up on so many different occasions that you would normally um, spend with friends. Do you have anything like that coming up, Bill? That you no, I was just, no, no, first of all, I'm just in awe. I'm in awe of this conversation and very, and very much in awe of the creativity uh, that making, uh, making giants, see, I had to look at my notes just to make sure that I didn't mess that up, that making giants is using, I think that is beautiful and you can rest assured that I'll be there for you. I'm going to go check that stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, that one of the things that we need to understand, so I work for in my real job, uh, uh, I work for a very scientific company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, very much involved in, in uh, pharmaceuticals and very much involved in crop science stuff all over the world. And I think in these times, uh, there's a couple of things. I think obviously the, the, the resurgence to look at your faith and to, and to look at what you believe. But I also think it's very cool that again, I'm just going to say this out loud. I'm a science guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe in science, Me but too. it also is a bit in humbling to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because yeah. Mother Nature's smarter than us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we can't control that, you know? And uh, I always like to say in, in a lot of the meetings and things that I speak in, uh, the conferences and stuff that I talk in for my real job, control's an illusion, right? We think we're in control, but we're not, right? Mm -hmm. And the image of the cocoon that you were talking about that, that and, and what's going to come out of it, I think that's really the gist of what we have to take out of this whole thing. It ain't pretty right now. It's not what we want it to be, right? Uh, and But when you think about the themes that are going to come out of this, the creativity, the artistry, all the beautiful things, the support of everybody, understanding that everybody's in a different situation, understanding that, that yeah, there might be some guy that's he, it's really not going to affect him. He's got a big house. He's, you know, he's set up, but there's other people, other people that really aren't in those situations and, and understanding the needs that they have. I think we're going to see, this is Bill's opinion, right? Or as my friends would like to call it, you're about to hear, hear a Billism, right? <laughs> uh, I, I've been known to have an opinion or two over the years. Should I, should I add a disclaimer, Bill? This, yeah, these this, views this, do this, not reflect the, the, the beliefs and the opinions of the round table talk. Go yeah, ahead. That may be, and it, uh, I'm good with that. But I really think that what we're going to see is we're going to see each of us uh, get a little bit more in touch with mm -hmm. reality, get a little bit more in touch with all the different facets of our society, uh, all the different thoughts, all the different beliefs, all the different people, right? And be able to understand that that's a responsibility that we all have, right? And be able to understand how we can nurture and help and do everything that we can, right? Mm -hmm. to, uh, to make that beautiful thing come from that cocoon, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that analogy, by the way. I might write a song about that, you know? One of, my, one, of, one, of my, uh, one of my little mantras that I have. 
We'll add it to our Passover Spotify playlist. Send it to us. Ah, okay. Uh, one of my little uh, uh, mantras that I have in my songwriting is if you hear a song that sounds like it was written about you, it may have been. So not all my songs come out of my head, just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. And I think that's what we could look forward to uh, mm -hmm. when this thing, you know, subsides and when it gets better. You know, I think there's going to be some change that will never go away. I think some mm -hmm. of the social distancing and that kind of thing is, is, are good lessons for mm -hmm. all of us to learn. Uh, but I think that there's going to be a lot of beauty and a lot of really cool things and a lot of really cool ideas uh, mm -hmm. from a personal and a societal standpoint that have come out of this. And I'm really looking forward to it. And the very fact that I just heard one is amazing to me. So thank you for that. Yeah, our pleasure. Uh, you know, what you mentioned, the social distancing may, la may last. And I was joking on Facebook that this is the ideal time for me because all my life, what, you know, you ever have that empty room and it's 4,000 empty chairs and you're sitting there and someone comes and sits right next to you. You know, you're in public transportation, a huge train that's empty and they sit right next to you. You know, now I go out, I actually use that. I was at Costco the other day and I love my favorite pizzas, Costco pizza, by the way, if anybody just wants to send me something, I love Costco pizza. But I'm in line and this guy behind me is standing right on top of me. And I literally turned around and said, social distancing. And he backed up. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I love that. These two magic words get people away from you now. All you have to do is say social distancing and people give you space. And I love space. I'm a recluse who's always at home. And hey, this is the time for me. Like Bill was saying earlier, this is the time I have been training for. So we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I like to do at the end of every show is just allow my guests the opportunity to give a few brief final words to our audience. So I'm going to start with Sarah. No pressure. Yes. Um, words for our audience. Well, I hope, audience, those of you out there today, that you're able to find some fun and some pleasure in your Friday, whatever that means for you. Um, for me, that is going to mean having a really delicious Shabbat dinner with my family tonight and putting my phone and my computer away. And we are going to do some karaoke in our living room tonight. And I am really, really in need of that. So Aww, I hope that whatever, whatever karaoke in your living room is for you, that you are able to find that today. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We, we want you to do the karaoke on Zoom, by the way, so we can see it. I don't know if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, what, what, what do you have for us? Oh, boy. I think my wish for, uh, well, first of all, thank you. You make an hour go really fast, Sharifa. I fun. try. You are welcome. <laughs> and Bill, it was nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. But my wish for everybody is my wish for myself today because I'm not actually super feeling it, but peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so however you nurture that in yourself i wish that for you because i'm about to go like walk real fast around the block and try to catch some peace <laughs> catch that piece that's gonna be a new phrase but to chase it down right <laughs> i always thought you just kind of waited for peace to find you maybe, maybe that's a different way I maybe that's how they do it in austin i may be doing it wrong somebody chasing peace is kind of hilarious <laughs> yeah yeah exactly we need a meme for that. Bill, what do you have for us? Well, you know, first of all, this is great. And, and thank, thank you very you. much. And, I, and I've met some people and had some conversations with some folks today that I would probably have never met before. So that's very special. And, and that's one of the things that we can take away from this whole world, this whole strange environment that we're currently operating in. Uh, I would just like to say this, you know, it is what it is till it's not, man, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it, this is not optimal. It's not what we want to do. It's not what we think, but you know, we could capitalize, we could capitalize on this. You know, I have a, I have a tune. Uh, here's a flagrant, a flagrant commercial, right? I have a tune that talks about change, right? And the tagline for that, uh, that tune is the change always teaches us to be everything we're destined to be. Mm -hmm. Everything we're destined to be. We're more, than who we are every day. I mean, we could get locked up so much in all of the everyday busy, busy, right? And all the stuff And I've got it, you've got it, we've all got it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a good time for us to just sit back, take a pause, 
chase the peace. Look at me tying that in. See, nice little segue. Uh, <laughs> chase the peace down, right? And become who we really are, you know? Mm -hmm. Put all of that craziness and all of that silliness aside, right? And realize that who we are and where we are can help us become who we should be. And so that's, that's really all I have other than uh, I got a text in the middle of our conversation from uh, my three-year-old granddaughter. And uh, so if you're going to go out to uh, the social media stuff and look at some of my requests, you can rest assured that I will be busted out the theme song from Frozen anytime, any day. <laughs> yes, we will tune in. <laughs> we definitely have to see Frozen. And then I'm going to go, after I watch the Frozen video, then I'm going to go have some t-shirts made that said, Chase the Peace. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy one. <laughs> hey, you might want to make them first. I think you coined that. So I just want to thank you all for being my guest today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You, you are so welcome. I want to thank Belinda Baker for co-hosting today. And for everyone who tuned into the show and who's watching it, I appreciate your support. But I definitely want to ask you to support the show, support our guests. Their information is in the description, in the post. Go to their website, check them out, take a look at everything that they're doing. Go ahead and listen to some of Bill's music. Find out what Waking Giants is doing. Take advantage of some of their organizational tools that they provided for you. Because the one thing that we need during this time of separation is each other we're here back on monday at 8 a.m pacific time please share the show if you're interested in being a guest visit the website at ashsharifa.com everyone have a safe and blessed weekend bye now